Do you know what your partner's up to when you're away and they're all alone? No, what? They're listening to the Screw Podcast, of course. What's that? Mm, sit back, relax, and listen. And you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Sneaking in the back door with dirty magazines. So your mother wants to know what all the stains on the jeans. And you're an orgasm addict. Here we go. Welcome to the Freak Show. <laughs> this is Felicia Rose. Uh, and <laughs> Thanks for giving me that quote. <laughs> This is uh, A Love. Yes. On the the one two. Yeah, on the one two, said. on the three four, <laughs> on the five sixty nine. Uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah. Hi everybody. Hi. We're back for another week of titillating nonsense. Hell, ooh, titillating nonsense. I like that. Yes. I like that. That would be a good name, band name, titillating nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I love these people that pick. We have nipple clamps in the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the nipple clamps just have like SpongeBob characters dangling off of them. Yeah. Titillating nonsense. So I was inspired by your your um your porn reference last week. Or your not your porn reference, oh, but like oh boy. your porn choice. So I started thinking like, because you know me, again, and I've said this a hundred times on this podcast, I'm not a big visual porn consumer. Um, Mm -hmm. and and I was trying to think about why, and I've, you know, come up with different ideas before, but I think I am at the point where, you know, I've had so much exposure to sex for so many years, like seeing fucking or seeing just- Are you bragging? (laughs) I've done so much sex in so many places. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, more more just like contextualizing like the the point I'm going to make, which is and I love it. It's beautiful. I love nudity. I love sex. I love seeing it. I love hearing about it. Um but to excite me in the sense is it's too I need like that kind of mystery or hint or something that allows my imagination to fill in the blanks a little bit and I think you know my own mind excites me what can I say but that being said you know um I started thinking about well what what kind of like (laughs) you know because you you mentioned real dolls and that that situation so I was like I think I do have something kind of off off kilter that I can like talk about so um so cock pumping, right? Which has a lot of controversy to it. And Wait, what is cock pumping? So um, it's is? like vacuum pumping or water pumping. Um, so it's a cylinder and you put it over your cock and it adds like pressure by taking out the air, I think is what it does. So it extends your cock within the cylinder. And a lot of people will talk about using this to add volume or length to their dick and that I'm not really going to get into because I'm pretty skeptical that it has that any effects from pumping are more than just temporary it's like when you go to the gym right you bang out a set on your biceps your biceps are probably going to be swollen for like a half an hour or an hour but until you really like are killing and building muscle in there, <laughs> they're probably going to swell back down a little bit and you're not going to be as impressed with the way they look two hours sure. later as you were right after. And there's been many jokes and things over the years in movies and TV shows about guys, you know, pulling out a couple of sets right before they go to the, the club so they look all jacked up and, and pumped Yeah, up. like in the locker room, every wrestler is doing push-ups before they go out. Right. To make themselves look so nice so and so that. that, but for the cock, right? <laughs> okay, but the but it's not a muscle. It's it's not. So what is happening? So what's blood. happening is the skin is getting swollen, right? The skin itself is is you know if you hit the your sponge, yeah, it's getting right. spongier. It's getting spongier, right? <laughs> so there's something you know. <laughs> And maybe it is just, again, following that line of, like, I need something that I can't see all the time or haven't seen all the time everywhere. So a big, swollen, pumped dick 
it looks kind of gnarly when you first see it, but then there's something kind of super ordinary. <laughs> like, I, don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of, I think there's a vulgarity to it. That's what I'm going to say. It's like a nice fat ass, like clapping. It's kind of vulgar and it's kind of hot, right? It's, it's, it's. I would, I would say it's more than kind of, but yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, it's so... kind of hot. It's <laughs> clapping. <laughs> so, and I'm just going to preface So this. you're saying, so you're saying you like the, do you like watching the actual. Pumping? Pump? No. Or do you just no. like seeing the after? I like seeing the after effect because it's pretty, okay. it's pretty vulgar to see a big swollen dick try to like shove it in a mouth. And it doesn't really fit. It's like it's ordering oh, like it's I like see. ordering like a triple decker burger, and you you're like I don't have any idea how I'm gonna shove and take a bite out of this triple decker burger. It's the same <laughs> it's a triple decker dick. It's the same kind of thing, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna preface this. There's all sorts of conversation about the safety of of pumping. So I'm not endorsing it in any way i'm just saying it's a okay. thing there's all sorts of conversations about how to do it more safely so if it's a curiosity of yours definitely do some Make sure research. you read up on it yeah. and do some research got you okay and what i've heard is that the water pumps the pumps that include adding water into it are better and more effective i don't again don't know if that's true i don't think the fda is exactly verifying all these conversations but i do know that in some cases with men with erectile dysfunction or whatever there you know there are kind of more medical grade pumps that don't look as sexy and flashy <laughs> so that's what i know about it but you know i just wanted to put it out there because i found it you know i i had to think about this i'm like is there anything in the real doll esque arena that is like non-typical that i've i've browsed on the internet you know because it's 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 intense when you see them. <laughs> they look like huge, swollen, like, dicks. And watching them, like, cram it into a mouth or a butthole or any of these things is, like... It's so a... is that the part that you like? I think I like the vulgarity or extremeness of it. Like, yeah, I mean... So does there have to be a person that's going to get penetrated by this pumped dick after? Or is it just... No, like, no, like, I mean... Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily, you know, like one of these, there's a lot of guys that pump it, they throw a cock ring on and like, you know, they up their contrast on their phone, and like get you a nice, <laughs> yeah, I'll know what like I'm Stravini. fucking talking about. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like rock. <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks, you know what it is? I think it must like hail to that kind of Tom of Finland, like over exaggeration of like male characteristics and body parts, you know? Well, if if I were to compare that to something on the the other end of that, I would compare it to probably like a, a huge fetish that I've that I've been asked to do is um, what's the fucking term for it? I don't know. I forget the term for it, but basically like breast breasts getting larger and larger and larger, and all of a sudden my tits are too big for me, and it's like. Uh, like yeah. you know like in a whether they ask me to do it by starting with a tiny little bra and making myself look flat and then uh, the next push-up bra and the next push-up bra and the next push-up and all of a sudden my tits are like in my eyeballs but it's kind of similar in that way of like engorging it's like the idea of like your tits getting so full and i know it's not the same obviously no no it, but it but it is know. it you know <laughs> they, they, whenever i because i i like i like big ass as well so it, it does like to me it falls in this kind of vein and i don't know how these guys it's probably like some of them are ass plant implants or something and i when i learned that that was a thing a few years ago i i don't know it made like my butt tingle like i, I couldn't imagine having something fake shoved into my butt you know although i sure after sitting for eight hours at a desk job or something it might be a nice in-house cushion if you will but um you know I, i'll i'll come across these things on like dirty twitter of like you know guys with you know i, I like really big 
girl ass too but and that's kind of typical but these guys with these these big asses that wear like a thong in between them and then they have these tiny little fucking waists somebody tell me how it's the, a bbl they're taking the fat out of you their say waist so? in their ass yes <laughs> I mean, listen, genetics come into play. Some people sure. are just genetically, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to, genetically superior, let's be honest. Little waist, big ass, like, fuck you, you won, <laughs> you won the fucking, at least in this day and age, you've definitely, you definitely won the fucking lottery, but that's not super common. And it's a, typically, typically when you see it, you're seeing some kind of body mod was done okay. whether it was they got fat taken out of their waist and put in their ass or maybe they got fat taken on their waist and they got the implant in their ass a lot of times those are those are surgeries that go together you do it at the same time mm. uh like like a, a brazilian butt lift you do a lot of like there's a lot going on at one time to get you that that kind of hourglass figure look or okay. whatever but yeah when you see somebody with a real tiny waist and a real fat ass Oftentimes they've had work done. No, not everybody. But, but uh, there's a thing, you know. And and we we talk about this all the time. There's lots of reasons people like different things. But I'm always wondering, like, what about the human mind is making these kind of like? And are they extremes? You know, are they really extremes, or have we just gotten to be like a skinny bitch culture? And so when we see it, we're like, oh, that's <laughs> that's something shiny and new, you know, on some level. Well, if I just think if, all I think about whenever these things are brought up is I, I'll think about s songs, for example, mm -hmm. from the '90s, and it's you know I, I like, like big, big butts, butts and I cannot lie. Song. But if you think about the measurements he gives out, it's oh, like yeah. real fucking tiny waist, real fat ass. So this has been liked forever. It's, yeah, I guess. That's I think true. it's the. I think it's the the word i'm looking for it's the it's they used know. to say rubenesque those and and i don't know exactly yeah i don't i don't it's weird because we're in you know we have like this changing of times where th like all of a sudden now being really slim again is like back in style or whatever a lot of people are getting their implants taken out they're getting their you know they're trying to reverse a lot of the things that they did because at one point having huge hips and a huge ass was the thing and now not so much anymore but that's not true because there's plenty of like i'm like wait wait wait. are we gonna reality. see larsa larsa pippin and like in the next season looking like a twig <laughs> it's it's weird because well now like the ozempic trend is huge and so it's just strange like how the trends go my thing is you should if you're going to modify your body you should modify it in the way that you've always envisioned your body mm. it should not be based on a trend so i have always wanted my apron belly gone and an ass that wasn't flat that's mm. always how i wanted my body to look i have gotten my ass a little more circular but like there's not much more i'm gonna be able to do unless i literally become a gym influencer and spend my entire day working on my glutes okay that's not <laughs> right i have the time to do right so therefore if i truly want the body shape that i like there's no there's nothing in the world that is going to take away my apron belly aside from surgery so if i truly mm. want the body that i've always envisioned myself to have i'm going to need surgery and i'm probably going to eventually get that surgery that is my goal is to get uh, what they call an air sculpt XL BBL with like the tummy tuck thing or whatever, where they basically take the fat out of my belly and put it in my ass. It's not going to be hugely invasive like a lot of those other surgeries, but I'm going to make my body look the way I've always dreamt it to look, not the way that the trends are going. So even if the trends mm. go backwards and everybody is walking around with a small booty again and all that, it doesn't matter. I want my body to look a specific way, but I've always wanted it to. Mm. And therefore I think I'm ready to make a decision surgery wise. If I were to come upon money, you know, and I'm never going to, but let's pretend like somebody <laughs> listening right now is like, Oh, I have $20,000 to give you. I want you to have a dream body that you cry and wake up every day so happy to dress or not mm. dress. Anyways, so that is the way I think everybody should look into 
changing their body is when you were little what did you hate about your body is it something you still hate today maybe that's mm. the thing you change and not go look at the trends that are online yeah. not that you should hate parts of your body either everybody should love themselves as is but that's it's easier said than done a lot of us don't have the option to love ourselves as is so if you have the ability to get a surgery just make sure it's a surgery that is following your heart not a mm. trend that's all i'll say about that interesting yeah so i also like in that vein i read something about um the the trending occurrence of whatever they inject into the lips to make those mm -hmm. bigger lips that they're doing injections into the cock to give it more I, and like i i'm gonna be real <laughs> i'm I'm sure I'm one of those guys who has thought once before an inch or two might look cool. Um, sure. But I've never been, I, I, I can't even imagine a catheter, okay? So <laughs> I can't imagine sticking anything in my deck. I can't handle like the whole sounding thing. I, I, even as like an off the beat and path fetish, when I see it, it makes my my whole genital area shrink up into my body. I can't even, like, it just freaks me out. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tough one. Not a lot of people can handle that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. And I don't it, think anybody, not anybody, I don't think, I would say nine out of 10 people with a penis probably can't envision themselves doing anything to their penis that is, is yeah. penetrative because it's not really a penetrated organ on your yeah. body, you know, it's, no. it's, once in a while you get a, a you know dick tip swab but like that's again that we're not looking at which like is a, that's awful a occurrence. Yeah, I'm, sure. I'm sure if somebody had to put a fucking swab in my urethra i'm sure i would fucking kick somebody you know so i yeah. i totally understand that but i don't think many people like the penis is typically used to penetrate it's not being penetrated so i can understand why that would be like a uh, you know so do you think and I wonder, you know, people who are, because I, I honestly, I, I'll just be honest. I've never thought about modifying anything in any like real sense of the matter, you know, mostly because. Oh, I, aren't we blessed? No, no, no. Mostly because I, <laughs> not like, not like that, you know, <laughs> not because I think I'm perfect, but. I'll say this before you even say anything else. I will say that. Anytime your body has gone to a point where you didn't like it, it took you like one month to get it back to where it was. <laughs> so, I, you know, which is which is good. You have good genes. I'm not saying that you necessarily think your body is perfect. I'm just saying that the way that I see you, I think that you were you're pretty blessed. Like you have a pretty, you know, healthy body. It's healthy. It's Aww, it, well, it you. looks great. You know, even thank when you. you when you'll be like, oh, I know, I'm not feeling so hot about myself right now. I look at you, I'm like, you look great. What the fuck are you talking well, about? So I'll give you an example. I've never been a big God's favorite children. <laughs> I've never been a big fan of my nose, but I have no vision of a different nose on my face. I think that's what I mean. I can't. I have a hard time like thinking of myself looking differently. And look, I've I've certainly done visual porn and all sorts of stuff and. But I've never done it to the degree where I'm constantly like seeing myself and editing myself, you know. So I, I guess that's where I was going. Do you think people who are in the public eye are are more conscious of these things and thinking about it more because they're getting more feedback or just because they're yeah. they themselves are like looking at themselves? It's tough. I'll say as somebody that is slightly in the public eye and how i mean i do depend on how i look to get money mm -hmm. um it's tough because part of this job has made me love myself a whole hell of a lot more mm -hmm. i watch back videos of myself and i'm like god damn girl you are hot like you could get it <laughs> like, nice yeah, nice like, like my my videos make me horny i am good at what i do and i like the way that i look doing it and all of that so there's parts of myself that i was once insecure with that i no longer am because i see it in a new light because i i kind of have to you know mm. i'm i have to watch myself even though i sometimes don't feel like it and then the other part is that you know people will criticize you no matter what 
you're, True. you know, you might be, say you're a BBW fucking actress, porn star, whatever. Mm-hmm. People are still in your comments calling you fat as if you don't literally make money off of that. <laughs> yeah. You know? no, that's, like I, that's I, crazy, I yeah. recently at the beginning of the year, I posted something about like my BBW content and somebody commented under it. I was like, your only fans is way too expensive for you to have gotten fat. And I was like, baby boy, I make more money off my BBW videos than any other fucking content I've ever made. So nice try. Like you're goofy. You're a goofy goober. Don't talk to me like that. But also, you know, there are plenty of people that would read something like that and their insecurity could come out sure. or all of a sudden somebody, you know, some, I think a lot of times people have a, they don't understand, like, don't necessarily compliment something unless you have the green light to, cause it could be something somebody's insecure about, you know, sometimes people will be like, Oh, I really love the way you're, <laughs> your belly hangs or like you know shit like (laughs) of course well and that's what i was gonna say do you have to word it like that you know you're not really making me feel fucking good about myself even though it's supposed to be a compliment you know well and i think so it feels like a backhanded but it's not you know sure i think that that's one of the kind of maybe perspective differences of a lot of like in-person sex work versus screen sex work in the sense that you know when I used to work the bus depot, you know, there would be likely four or five other guys there. And you never would hear why they chose so-and-so over you, right? It sure. was just, sure. I chose that person. So there was never this kind of scrutiny that was going on about the specifics of, like, my body or my dimensions or my cock size or my ass aesthetic. <laughs> I'm loving that word this week. Aesthetic. Um, and... And I think that, you know, maybe did leave me in a very, like, different place. I mean, there's obviously all sorts of other concerns and and possible issues with in-person sex work that come up. But, you know, because I've certainly shown up for a client before and, like, you know, been told, uh, I'm going to give you half, but I'm good. You know, and you don't take that any particular way because you don't ask you don't ask, you, you know, it, or you shouldn't ask. I'm sure some people probably do ask, but I've never tried to take, you know, not choosing me like to heart or person, you know, personally. I mean, like, look, in the grinder era, you send pictures and people block you. If I took that as a, <laughs> as a, as a hit to my self esteem, there, there could be a variety. <laughs> and, 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 Men are so oh, shitty. No. And I think, I think somewhat it is the perspective that I learned from in person sex work. There are so many people into so many different nuances from apron belly to like big noses to long hair to I hate long hair to a, you know, I love a buzz cut to, you know, whatever the list goes on and on. So, you know, I, I knowing that and seeing that so much because, you know, a lot of sex work too can be, can you pretend you're somebody who is X, Y, and Z? And it's like, sure, (laughs) sure I can, you know, so you don't tend to personalize these things. But, you know, online sex work, there's so much like commentary going on. And honestly, you know, I'd I'd never experienced that on any real level. I never had anybody like online and say your dick isn't big enough or your this isn't that or your your booty ain't cutting it, you know. So Right. <laughs> but I but I do actually this is a good transition into like that kind of idea that these things and this constant kind of conversation around you and your sex, it, it it's got to be stressful. Like how do people how do online sex workers like deal with that like what are you like what are recommend they quit <laughs> they quit <laughs> <laughs> okay so truth zone i just lost a couple friends in the sex worker world to going back to what we call civ work so civilian work uh-huh. uh and i'm telling you I, you know this might not answer your question perfectly but the burnout is fucking real. Mm. And one of the things that one of my friends recently said, it really made a lot of sense. And she, she basically explained to me that she created this persona Mm -hmm. and the persona took up so much of her brain space that she like lost 
who she was mm. in the process of everything. She she started to at one point I guess she was like talking to a friend or whatever and started to answer them in her sex worker persona voice. Oh wow. And she was like holy shit and I think that was when it kind of dawned on her that she's lost herself in the shuffle of this game and she immediately at i don't know if it was immediately at that moment but it was soon after she basically made the decision that she no longer knows who the fuck she is and she needs to walk away now before it's too late mm. and i guess like after she finally made the official full decision that night her body relaxed for the first time in years like she actually was able to like take a fucking breath this th she had a medical thing going on that they couldn't really explain aside from it, it was anxiety essentially uh -huh. and that ceased immediately mm. like her her anxious mind kind of sure. rested and you know i'm not gonna say that everybody's the same or that there's a way to fuck off okay. <laughs> or, new york you know, city just, there's only so much i can fucking ignore of it you know yeah um i'm not gonna say that like the solution is to walk away or that everybody has the ability to right not everybody right. can leave sex work not everybody can focus on themselves and go back to what we call civilian work that's not always an option right however i have seen more people need that even if it's just temporary even if it's just i need to step away for a little bit of time i think that your utilizing your body your creativity your mind and your personality even if it's a fake personality that you've drummed up it's still a piece of you and i think that putting it out there on a regular basis as a way to make money can cause burnout really mm. fucking quick or not quick either way nah. i think that i think a lot of people don't understand that from the outside you know that it's it's a rough job sometimes it's beautiful and amazing and fantastic and you walk away from a really successful night and you're like wow i just made a thousand dollars having my tits out and talking about wrestling for example sure that's a that, that's a reality that you may face sure another reality is that you walk away from a 20 dollars stream where you were fucking every hole and saying dirty things and putting yourself on blast and you only made 20 bucks and it's like is is that all i'm worth so i think that there is an easy it, there's an easy burn or a quick burnout rate for mm. a lot of people i don't think it makes you any less strong i don't think it, it sometimes your body just can't hang anymore sure i think sometimes your mind can't hang anymore i think sometimes it's just a lot to put on yourself mm. and it's just a it's a grueling job in general it's a it's you don't work a nine to five for fuck's sake you're working from the moment your eyes are open to the moment your eyes are closed oftentimes and so i think that a lot of people have burnt out because especially because post covid you know we had the covid boom where everybody was home people were getting free money people right. were you know not necessarily spending a ton of time in the workplace right. people had had the time to make like a secondary job or things like that and a lot of people were consuming a lot of porn yeah and so a lot of us saw an uptick in our numbers and growth and a lot of people started to do it because of covid because it was like well what am i else am i going to do during a lockdown i'm going to show my body online and sure. i think a lot of times people use that flippant energy or or say those you know oh i could just sell my tootsies online and make some money or oh you know my friend she does only fans she makes a hundred thousand dollars a year it's like those are all fun and you know i get it not most people don't make a hundred thousand dollars babe yeah. There's a reason why I'm in the top 5% on OnlyFans, but I'm not making anywhere near that, right? Like right. if people were, if a, if tons of people were truly making that much money, my percentage would be way further down the list, right? Sure. So I think- Is that, that what it's based on? It's based on money and how It's and based subscribers? on how, well, it's, it's a couple things. It's okay. a couple metrics, but the idea is like how much money you have, you've made, how many- and which ways you made it and then how many subscribers you have okay. sort of like what the okay the the percentage means and you know if i'm in the top five percent and i'm not if i'm not even making like i you know we know i'm barely making livable wages right now right that's not a good sign yeah. so like let's stop this false narrative that everybody you know i have a few friends that do make six figures doing this as a career 
good for you. You are not the norm. Maybe at one point it was, it was a little more, there was more of a chance of higher success, but like, unless you go viral, you are not the fucking norm. Let's stop normalizing these numbers mm. i'm so sick of my friends coming to me and telling me oh well my friend shelly down the road she does only fans and she makes like a hundred twenty thousand a year that's nice for shelly stop telling that story to people Absolutely. first of all does anybody want their fucking personal information out there of how much money they make no they told you this in confidence <laughs> right. and second of all that's how much Shelly made last year. Shelly might not make that much this year because there's a fucking recession. Shelly might Shelly might be sick of showing her butthole online. She might be burnt out. Stop glamorizing this. It is it can be in a beautiful job and it, it can be the right job for some people. Not A, not everybody has the option. Some people cannot do anything else but this job. So stop fucking talking about it like you're going to willy-nilly go into sex work and be successful. That's rude and it diminishes the fact that so many people have worked so hard to build their platforms and to do the work that they do, and you think you're going to roll up and just fucking put on a pair of pantyhose and you're successful. Fuck sure. you. Second of all, you're also, you're talking to, like, coming to a sex worker that does not make anywhere near what your friend Shelly makes and talking about it to me, it makes me, it hurts my feelings. And it's sure. that's part of the reason why there's burnout. It's because we're constantly fucking comparing ourselves to everybody Absolutely. else. You know, there's very few successful online workers that did it without needing to go to a studio, without going pro, without having a Pornhub account, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Miss, B, Miss B Nasty is not the norm. Miss B Nasty is a woman who got successful because of a single vi a viral video and her success took off from there and she is doing fucking amazing that woman makes millions of dollars a year and she she i think she's only filmed once or twice with a studio like she purposefully only went the only fans worked for herself route but that is not the fucking norm so let's not talk about it like it is it's not easy for everybody it's not normal for everybody to go viral and it's not going to be instant overnight success sex workers are worn out burnt out tired most of us are poor and most of us are hungry so can we pretend can we stop pretending like this is a fucking glamorous well, right. job just because you, you follow three sex workers online that look like they're having a blast sitting in the hot tub bouncing their boobs right, up and down right, right, right. you know what that woman just had to do even though she's probably working a little less than I am and a little bit more successful and making a lot more money, she also just had to spend most of her vacation filming the fucking thing right. so that she could get it paid for and she could get the sponsorship from the hotel that gave her a free night stay. And she could, you know, all of yeah. those, these people have their fucking cameras on them 24 hours a day. And whether, you know, whether you're making $200,000 a year or $25,000 a year, it's a full-time fucking job. And even though you're seeing some of the glamorous sides of it, you're not seeing all of the pieces to the puzzle. So stop pretending like it's impossible for somebody that makes $300,000 a year to feel burnt out. I'm sh pretty sure a guy on Wall Street feels fucking burnt out too, and he's making just as much money. Well, that's okay? what I'm gonna say. Doesn't make it. It doesn't mean that your resources are less, and that, you know you have more resources. You have the ability to take time off. All of those things are true. Sorry. But the people that are, it doesn't matter how successful you are. The burnout is fucking there, and it's fucking real, and it's mentally taxing. Just because you make more money doesn't make it any less mentally fucking taxing. Do we agree? Yes. Yeah. Well, and that's that's you know. That's the kind of interesting part, you know, and and I mean to to speak on the the first part you 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 used as an example, it made me think of back in I don't know the late nineties um, when like phone phone sex lines were still a thing. I had a couple of friends that that did it right, and and it reminds me of also that Spike Lee joint Girl Six, which I always talk about as one of my favorite movies because it actually shows kind of that example. She got so in her head and so good at being a phone sex operator and putting on these fantasies for people with this very particular persona because one of, you know, somebody recommended that she do that, right? That she she pick a persona, like acting almost, and in and own it so she can separate it from her her own persona her own person and sure. that line started becoming very like blended for her 
you know, and, and caused a burnout and caused a lot of things, right? And so in the 90s, I had these friends that were doing it and were like, you know, talking about, you know, they were making decent money and kind of, you know, how, how to do it. And so I, I went and, and tried it one one night. And, you know, the first thing about some of these things is just capturing somebody to stay on the line with you is really hard. You kind of have to be already in the mental state of your full puta voice ready as soon as they say hello, you know, to to try to, you know. And back then, they used to have, like, press five for this or press six for this fantasy. It all came to the same fucking people, by the way. So you always start, <laughs> you always would start off the conversation with, so what are we looking to, looking for tonight, honey? You know, right. kind of kind of conversation. And what I found really challenging about it is, you know, as a as a dude, like, you know, and I you don't it's not like visual porn. You don't have to see that I'm hard. I can be telling you that I'm hard. But like talking right. dirty in general turns me on as like a personal like excitement. I like talking dirty. It's it's, you know, one of my my things, one of my favorites. I like it during sex. I like it in general, I like verbal exhibitionism. <laughs> I, I like verbal voyeurism. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, I found really quick that I couldn't sustain the um, the the kind of constant endorphin rushes that were going on within myself. I was exhausted after mm-hmm. like four or five calls, and it's not like I came or anything. I was just would. To really be good at it, I had to get into it with them. They like they yep. they had to believe it. I was like, I do not know how this is sustainable, you know. And everybody was telling me, "Well, you're putting too much into it." Well, I, okay, but that's that's the thing. We're all people tell me that all the time, and I'm like, I'm sorry, my work is not going to get more shitty because you think I need to put in 75 percent of myself. But you're right; it is very draining. I if I whenever I do like I as everybody knows I I don't have any privacy right now so I can't <laughs> film it's been since right. November so like I basically don't have money or you know, I'm struggling and right. uh but like those days like oh I'll have one day to film and I put I put, I put so much effort into my shit right. that like in a perfect world I'd film maybe three videos a day and go live right something like that right I don't have the ability to do that anymore so I have to film like. 29 videos a day and go live three or four times by the end of that day i need to take like a week off because it's so fucking mentally draining because i i mean i'm making visual stuff once in a while it's it's just verbal only but not often not often am i doing voice memo only and i like i cannot do it unless i'm into it i have to get there mentally and physically (laughs) there's no workaround for me i can't pretend right Uh, you you can see that I'm not. Yeah, well, it's coming, one one you know? thing to like take your clothes off and spread, you know, your cheeks. It's another to like do that verbally without them seeing it. You know, it, it definitely mm. takes. You know, there's no, uh, you know, there's there's no kind of slacking with it. Otherwise, you won't make any I money. I think the verbal stuff because I, you know, I have a the Sex Panther that people still do. You know, they rejected uh, my account. Thing? What the fuck? I'm not surprised. Just try it again. I that's well. No, their but... their quote was, "I didn't have enough followers." Um, and what? Yeah, they literally in there. They gave a rejection reason, and the rejection reason was that my social media did not contain enough audience to to like I don't know. That make, is make so it stupid. Their... That is so stupid. Right. You know, I mean I guess it's better than saying, you know, you're not hot enough or something, but <laughs> I'll say this. I would much rather go live and do like a live show for a group of people than do one on one sexting. Really? It, there, or or one on one like audio. It, it's the same thing though for me yeah. like you said it's a lot easier like yes I'm, i have to mentally get there and all that but like i'm in control of that when when it's just a one-on-one experience i need to give you what you specifically are looking for and if i god forbid i say the wrong thing or you you know like sometimes people aren't specific enough so like i'll 
accidentally say a thing that's like a turn off to them and they're like well i don't like that i'm like shit you know like it's tough it's that one-on-one stuff can be really tough sometimes well, so like i i agree it can be very mentally and taxing. and and again the 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 whole pressure to make like a certain dollar amount into like that you know you're gonna starve this week or or not like pay your rent this week you know i remember once you know when i I had just gotten a raise at work i think this was even in worcester and i don't know if i ever told you about it but like i had a three-way and both the guys were pretty like open and kinky and one of them suggested that we go on cam four and i had never done anything visual on cam four you know i i looked at the site before but i'm like eh I'm getting coins. I don't understand how it works, blah, 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 blah. And so we did it just to be exhibitionists, right? So we went on there and then I put on the, you know, thing that like allowed them to tip or whatever. Cause like you can, you know, back in the day, you could do it just to do it or you could monetize it, you right? You still do that. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. Still and, you know, we just had unencumbered fun sex you know, with the, just the cam on us. And, like, we have made a whole bunch of money, which is cool. And part of me said, oh, well, you know, isn't that the fuck of it when you're not trying right. and you're giving this kind of, like, organic sexual experience, which is what I love about amateur porn, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, when, when, when people are recording just for the fuck of it, you know? But at the same time, you know, thinking about how to make money off of that would have given me anxiety because it would have changed the whole dynamic of the situation and then i've been like oh now i have to find two guys to come on with me three days a week in order to make whatever whatever you know and there is a whole lifestyle to it you know i was saying this the other day you know to your comment about wall street burnout (laughs) you know these are people that are you get a job and they tell you 40 hours and they mean 80 and it's salaried. So you're, you know, you think you're rolling in the dollars, but when you count it up in the end, you're probably making $20 an hour for all the overtime you worked that you don't get paid for when you're salaried. And then the whole idea of balance, you know, how do I go and be a person in the world, right? So you start fucking doing a little bit of blow so you can go out and like not be tired and have a life outside. You know, there's a, a slippery slope with like having to devote so much time for any job, <laughs> you know. And there's a there's also a physical aspect I don't think mm. people think like think of. If you are not, I just had a friend recently that had, you know, a thing going on with her face and she was like i can't film right now right. and i'm like yeah you can't honey <laughs> i mean you can't you can do like t- like headless but like you know there's it's funny because well it's not funny but like i don't think people think about just like the health and wellness sure. aspect we have to look good all the time yep. we have to make sure there's nothing funky going on yep. with our bodies we have to make sure you know god forbid we get a yeast infection we're out of work for a fucking week or god forbid you know whatever the fuck is going yeah. on with our bodies does have an effect imagine you know, I get my period once right. a month and i well i get my period twice a month actually that's fun and because of it i can't you know i can't film right now i can only film two weeks a month so right. if i do get my little filming window which is very rare and that just so happens to be the week the one of the two weeks i get my period okay well can't do that you know there's right. so i i can do some i always do workarounds but there's so many times where i'm just like i physically cannot film because there's something going on with my fucking physical health or something that is preventative yeah you know all and all of the sacrifices that we make just like the the prep alone for people to do an anal scene especially in a studio anal scene where you're not at home where you oh, can't yeah. just cut the cameras and all sure. that it, it's people don't think about all that if this shit is ta- this shit literally is taxing on I a mean, body imagine on a mind on a soul imagine you know? having a hernia and having to wait six months for an operation like i can't get banged out right. like right, right. Now. if you were if you were a porn star you would literally and there's no unemployment right option. exactly you know exactly. you can't go on unemployment because you can't get fucked because you have a hernia too bad for you so, figure it out so Anecdotally speaking, what do you think are the top three reasons for burnout with this kind of work? Anecdotally, uh, are we okay? I'm so, talk like, uh, talking amongst your friends, yeah, only online. Only, yeah, because I've done in-person work, and there's a, that's different, and I'm not going to talk uh, about that. So, um, 
I think number one is... Mm, I would say trying to find a happy medium in who you are versus who you want to put out there, who your persona is going to be, Mm -hmm. you know, having to roll switch all day long is tough. That's tough. Um, I think another piece of the burnout is that your job is not just dependent on what you create. There is a social media aspect to it that if you are not getting yourself viral or getting attention on social media you are not making any money sure anytime i stop posting for a few days i see my sales go hey we've no, we've noticed that just with the podcast you know mm, when we yeah. post a post a social media post we got hundreds of downloads when we don't we get seven you know and i, I mean right. you know it varies but like that is kind of that is a big portion of it um, right. So you're never not on. Yeah. That, I think that's what I was trying to go with that. You're never not on. Every time you have makeup on, oh, can I take a photo of myself or a video? Or do I have time to squeeze in a quick video in the bathroom before I go out with my friends? Or, so, you know, you have like this undying, for at least for me, again, because I'm, I'm poor, I have this like constant fear that I'm not working enough or that mm. I lost an opportunity. Like the anxiety I get when I look good and I didn't make content is I can't even explain it. The anxiety is through the roof. Why right. girl put on your makeup and go out and have fun. Why do you need to make a titty video really quick? Right. Oh, I look really good before I take a shower and wash off my makeup. i make a video in the, in the shower. What the fuck? Like you're never not thinking about your job. There's no sign off. There's no time off. There's just like I I recently saw a a mutual get married and she made content like at her honeymoon. (laughs) And if I, I, I I guarantee you, you know, maybe she wanted to, maybe she just was like, Oh, I feel sexy. This is fine. But for me, I see myself in that same position and think of it as I probably would feel obligated because I'm in a hotel. Sure. I look nice. Yeah. You know, like that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that constant obligation to create content, whether you're just a content creator, like a social media one, or you're a, you do porn or whatever it is. If your right. job is to get fans online, it is a constant feeling of obligation. And that mm. is tough. I've seen, I've seen more types of content creators burn out from that alone than anything else. Um, and I would say, This one's tough to say, but I'll explain it after. The amount of the amount that you feel degraded for how little you're making. And I I don't care how much you make. Sure. You I don't think you realize the types of customers that you are opening yourself up to when you do this kind of shit. Sure. You will be degraded on a regular basis. And I don't mean in a sexy way. And I don't mean with consent. Mm -hmm. You're going to be treated like an actual piece of shit. And yeah, those are the, those people have issues, but eventually it can get to you, you know, whether it's, whether it, listen, whether it's a person online, like a faceless, you know, account online or it's your fucking aunt who found out what you do for a living. Sure. People will try to minimize you and make you feel awful for what you do for the rest of your life. And I'm not saying that, you know, the the people that keep doing it are stronger because those people probably just, you know, got used to it. Like eventually you just learn how or, – or those people – have a social media manager that sure. shields them from the bad, you know, right. they don't have to look at the comments, but I will say that it's, it's, you know, society's expectations and so how society views you when you do this for a living can cause some serious fucking burnout. It, yeah. it really can just, just down to a standard health checkup visit. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. if you don't have a doctor that's pro sex work and chill as hell, like I do, right. you're fucked. Yeah. My my doctor, the first appointment that I had with him, I was telling him what I did for a living. And he was like, okay, how many clients do you see a week? Because I hadn't specified it was online only. Oh, right, right, right. And I was like, I, I could kiss you because he said it with such nonchalance. Yeah. And that's why that guy will be my doctor for the rest of my fucking life if I'm in this fucking city. Because he handled me 
as if I have a regular ass civilian nine to five. I totally. go to Wall Street and clock in every day. He Absolutely. didn't give two and a half shits, but that's not the normal. <laughs> when you go to a gynecologist and you are an in-person sex worker or you go yeah. to a fucking a dentist and, you know, you have oral thrush and you, you know, whatever it might be. There is always going to be a layer of judgment surrounding it. And it's tough. It's a tough, it's a tough gig to, to have. Speaking of that Sorry. doctor, many years ago when I saw the same doctor, <laughs> um, he, I, I asked him, what was the context exactly? I, so I, I had developed this curiosity about fisting and I still like, I'm still a fisting virgin, <laughs> but I, I maintain an ongoing. Wait, hold on. I have a video on my phone that says otherwise. Wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Taking a fist. Oh, okay. not giving a fist. <laughs> Sorry. Let me clarify. I have played handball a couple of times. Um... I'm like, I, I remember I produced one porn my whole life. Yeah. Fisting somebody, so. Um, you but... said I've been played handball. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was curious after like being physically examined, like if you know, like, do you think it would be safe for me to, you know, take a fest? You know, knowing like you know, because like you don't know, you, you have a bunch of rumors and conversation on the internet and in porn they like, i wanted the brass tax and boy did he give me the brass tax so i was very you know and of course it, you know s simple stuff like just starting out slow it's expandable doing it with moderation so you don't like cause like long-term damage and i know some people are in they want a long-term stretch they want to like loosen fast that's cool i mean, there's not a judgment about that but it was going Going along what my my kind of criteria was was yeah like you know I don't want my ass to fall out I'm not interested in pink stocking I'm not interested in rose budding can I do this and not have to go to that extreme you know so it is nice to have somebody affirming and you know I was recently doing a therapy search on psychology today for therapists if you guys if anybody out is looking for a therapist this is still one of my tried and true go-to's for searching for a therapist you know and this may help with your 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 burnout and I'm saying this specifically because they've recently added um, a, a few more filterables so you can filter by your insurance you can filter by your location you can filter if you want uh, LGBT um, oriented you can filter ADHD a anything on there you can filter by and you know they require all their therapists to fill these things out before they will post them so they've added the latest one which is sex sex work and kink friendly as yeah. as as a filterable thing filterable thing and you know it, this is important it is important to have and it's hard I'm not gonna bullshit that's not easy to find people that are affirming especially if you don't live in cities or live in places with vast huge healthcare systems but to find those things that is a great and and I'll just say right here there are a lot of therapists on there if you don't have insurance that do sliding scale and they usually list their sliding scale rates so you know, use it as a resource because it's really good to have somebody that understands where you're coming from without any judgment and gives you the kind of advice that you actually need or can say, I don't know, but let me do some research. Let me talk to some people and I'll get back to you. Those are the kind of answers you want to hear from any kind of provider of services like that. So, you know, I, I, I've definitely over the years, I've seen so many people come in and out of online sex work, in-person sex work, and and burnout is real, you know? There are a few people that have stayed tried and true over the years, and, I, and they seem to do it with a smile and bless their hearts, you know, and they, they seem to love it, and they enjoy the sex, and they enjoy the attention, and that's awesome. But there's a lot of people out there, like, you may enjoy all that, and then it'll at some point bite you in the ass, you know, when you weren't paying, when you were least paying attention, right? And then you find yourself breaking down a little bit. And like, again, I can really only speak to like in-person sex work, but there were definitely points in my life where like, 
you eventually feel, you know, like, like a drive through, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, yeah. it's like, you know, and, and certainly there are clients in, in all the realms over the years that you will find that are uber supportive, that you develop a particular kind of relationship with, not like necessarily a regular friendship or regular, you know, any kind of romance, but they're safe they're kind to you, they're respectful to you, and obviously those are like ideal clients, you know, they ask you how you are, you know, but there's a whole bunch of them that you walk in the door and they're like, take off your clothes, face down, ass up, You are you ready, are you clean, and then that's it. So you, you're like, objectification on all of these things is, is super hard, and, and dissociating is a real tool in sex work but it's not necessarily the most healthy tool in sex work yeah you know and that's for sure and it is something that you have to if you're going to do it and it's or if it's your only option be vigilant about remembering yourself whenever you can i used to go afterwards i would always go to like a park or like go get like you know, a hot chocolate, you know, just like kind of like little simple personal creature comforts, you know, and I, I did avoid write. you know, I, I write a lot of poetry, as you know, over the years, but it's that's something I didn't too often write about. Because there was like a realness of adding that to like my personal identity that for many years I wasn't actually very comfortable with, you know, for all the reasons we've talked about, you know, it's it's a very shame based reality, and it, even if well, you're, you know, you're not you don't feeling it. you don't write poetry about your Google ex, your uh, Google Docs or your Excel spreadsheets, right? <laughs> so why would you write poetry about your other yeah. jobs? I, I've had some be. really nice spreadsheets over the years, though. <laughs> Ode to a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, I like to consider myself a spreadsheet, just open and. Ready to be filled. Filled in. <laughs> how many lines? How many columns, baby? Sort and filter me. Baby. Yeah. So I I'd love to continue more of this conversation on our next podcast and maybe dive yeah. into some other deep things. But I, I like I, I think it's good to put these things out there. There's a lot of unrealistic expectations and as I see more and more people you know, with their thoughty Instagram accounts that connect to their OnlyFans accounts or their Twitter accounts. I think, wow, there's a lot of people out there trying at this. And of course, you know, people I started following two years ago, they're not doing it anymore. (laughs) You know, you don't see it on there, you know. So I think for a lot of people and work is shit these days, no fucking doubt. But don't step out of one shit into the next shit. Like, be sure you know what you're doing (laughs) because DoorDash may have sucked, but, you know, you didn't have to post on social media to get people to order their food. So (laughs) I'm coming up on nine years of this. Holy shit. My primary form of. Yeah, it was stupid. Well, you, you, I've actually, you know. And, I, and I'll say this, I, I, you know, I know you have your struggles, but, you know, I've known you before and I've known you now. And, you know, I've certainly had times where I've been concerned about your health and safety, <laughs> you know, not not because of anything specific, but because I do know what this kind of work, the, the, the t- toll it can take if you let it. But I'm also mm-hmm. not one of those people who is going to be a hard line and say, this is always horrible. This is always bad. This is never an option. You should always try something else. I, I, I can't say I believe that. It's paid my bills. I've met interesting people. Um, I've learned new things about sex and sexuality that I've certainly been able to apply to my personal relationships. You know, of course, you know, learning kind of people's freest most uninhibited moments in their life is important information to survive in this world. Absolutely. Whether you like going in and working an office job and looking at your your CEO and being like, I know what you do on the fucking weekends, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the burnout is real. It's It's different than standard job burnout. Everybody gets burnt out by everything. Yeah. But when you when you are the thing you are selling, yeah, that that leads to different 
burnouts and different feelings and emotions and all that. And uh, sometimes you do need to walk away for your own sake. Sometimes you can't because Mm -hmm. this is the, this is, you know, you're doing survival sex work or this is the only job you can keep or maintain or have, or, you know, whether you have a disability and you can't leave the house or whatever the fuck the situation is, you know, if you, if you have the ability to walk away and you need to do it, Mm. if you don't have the ability to walk away and you need to, Take care we can try to find you resources yeah. you know we can try to f- we can try to help you in some way but you do need to take well, care of yourself and, and and i think unfortunately when a lot of people say that second part what they mean is they're going to try to help you get out of sex work i we're it, oh i don't mean that no i know I, you I don't mean, I, I unless just, you want to that's sure. the thing is if you want to get out of sex work and you can't Right. There are resources to help you get out of sex Absolutely. work, but Absolutely. Uh, uh, some of those resources unfortunately don't have the right heart involved. They want to just end sex work. Yeah, it's very that's, moralistic. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. It's exactly. very moralistic. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a hard it's a hard conversation to have, honestly. It is. It is. And 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 people, you know, for all the reasons you stated, don't actually get a lot of forums to be able to talk about that and let that loose. You know, I see these new up and coming, you know, podcasts and OnlyFans creators that like they seem happy, they're on it, they're talking about how much they're learning, but they're new and it's exciting. And, you know, maybe their dick does get hard 12 times a day and it's not a fucking problem. But like, you know, I want to see them in three years and see how do you feel about every week being spent, like the focus being promoting your body and promoting your sex you know it's Mm -hmm. it's laborious (laughs) yep sure is you can subscribe to me at felicia rose (laughs) (laughs) no onlyfans.com felicia rose new hell yeah felicia dash rose dot many vids.com and loyal fans.com slash felicia rose thank you fuck yeah there you go All right, everybody. It was nice chatting with you. And uh, send Aaron your penis pump video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or, rec- that or recommendations. If you have something that you've been using that hasn't, like, deformed or mutilated your dick, I'd be curious to know <laughs> about it. <laughs> awful, awful. All right. It was nice chatting. Follow Bye. us online. Like us. We love you. Bye. Bye.